and then call for the vote. Okay. Well, do we do that now, or we're going to wait to the commissioner's discussion? You would do that now because yeah. he's trying to change. We're trying right. to change the agenda. As what John approached, do we need a vote? We'll put it on the agenda. Is there a motion made? I'll also move. Is there a second? I'll second that. All in favor? Okay. Uh, I, so John, uh, Harry, can you call yay or nay? Yeah, we're having some technological challenge here. Just say yes. You both yes. All right, what was your question to me, Pamela? Uh, there's a motion on the table to to add the governor's appointee discussion onto the agenda. Yes. It's been, we, it's been seconded. Okay, now you're calling for the vote? Yes. yes. I vote yes. Reese? I vote yes. No. And you get to vote too. Yes. Yes, okay, yes. so that's added. And then the next one, sir? The next one is, um, uh, you were very helpful to me yesterday in trying to look up the uh, contract that is in force for Hadley Housing Authority. Unfortunately, in all the material you gave me, I did not find a signed copy. So I would like permission from uh, or a vote of the board, Mr. Chairman, to uh, follow up with Pamela to try to get a signed contract. And if that fails, that I have the board's permission to contact THCD to get such a signed contract. So That's a motion. So the um, the explanation to that- Wait, Matt, I'm talking to the chairman, please. Well, Pamela knows the situation. So let her explain it to you, John. Thank you. During COVID, the Department of Housing allowed encumbered documents. Encumbered documents use uh, because we were in COVID. We the chair, the board votes from both of the Hadley Board of Commissioners and the Amherst Board of Commissioners were encumbered. So they it was they used the meeting minutes to val val add validity to that management agreement. So that's why I'm they were both signed because I'm, we were being. I'm not asking for an explanation now. I'm asking for this to be added to the agenda because you said it has to be added to the agenda. So I'm asking for a vote to add it to the agenda. You can discuss it later. Okay. You want to vote? We'll vote. Uh, ask, ask for a motion and then yeah. we'll vote. Is there a motion made to uh, add it to the agenda? I so move. Second. Any second out there? I'll second it. All I in favor? Aye. Aye. I can't hear Risa. I'm voting no. Thank you. I'll, I'll say yes. So, Pam, for the record, there's uh, three yes and one no. And we'll put both of those items under commissioner's discussions. Okay, and I have one more item to add to the agenda, Mr. Chairman. Yes, go ahead. I would like to have a vote of the full board at some appropriate time, your choice, as to whether we're going to have a virtual only meetings or hybrid meetings. And I so move. Okay. Okay. Second. Discuss uh, hybrid or uh, virtual? Motion made. Uh, the only thing I just I'd like to just advise the board, the full board, is that none of these items are actually not anticipated within 48 hours. The governor's appointee uh, issue has been swirling around and discussed at multiple occasions. The management agreement has been. I'm still speaking. The management agreement has been distributed since the everyone joined the board in May, and then again in June, and then now again. So that has. Um, and then the hybrid vote is also, you've been going back and forth in emails asking that we don't have hybrid. So you did anticipate these things and the proper way to do these is to contact the chair ahead of time and to um, to put them on the agenda. But that's excuse just- Excuse me, Ex excuse me. You asked me to put these things on the agenda and I asked the chairman to call for a vote to do that if the motion I made gets seconded. This is not business of 
of, of the administrative agent. This is the business of the board. Sir, I'm, I'm the executive director for, for the housing authority and I'm giving, it's just like when your town administrator sits and gives advice to the board of selectmen. So this is, this is not business anticipated in 48 hours. The board is voting to do so. I'm just advising against it because not look, looking at them, none of them are 48 hours in advance. But that's that's all I have to say. So if you would like to go forward, that's fine. Oh, with the agenda. With the agenda. Okay. Okay. And then just start moving we'll move forward. We're going with the uh, approval of the minutes, previous minutes. Did, did we get a vote, Mr. Chairman? Did we get a vote on that? No, we did not. We, we're we're moving ahead. Approval of the minutes, last minute. I, I move we approve the minutes. I'll second that, that for discussion. Say that again, please. I'll second the motion to accept the minutes, but with discussion. Right. Is there going to be a second on the motion made? Already I'll made? Second. All right. Uh, all right. Now to discussion, Harry. Okay. Under the. Uh, the minutes are fine it's a accurate and true reflection of everything we did just on the uh last page uh when we went to adjourn um i think the time is wrong because i didn't leave until 2 30 to get to granby so we have uh adjourning the meeting at 1 33. i think that's a typo i think it's 2 33. if everyone recalls our last meeting i had to leave and I made the motion to adjourn, but it was a 2.30. Anybody else remember that like I do? Yes, yes I do. Yeah. And, Thank you, Risa. And, and it's on the, it's recorded. It's, it's on YouTube. It is in my notes, and it was a typo, and it will be corrected. All right. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, Pam. So it, that was still made the approval after the, uh, Minutes were uh, uh, revised. Is there a vote to accept? I move we accept. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, board correspondence. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Chairman? Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, I've been informed that one of the tenants has been requesting uh, to be put on the agenda. And um, what, what Pamela just said, that's not on the board correspondence. What would you come under, Pamela? That would come under public right. comments. Public comments. It, 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 Mr. Chairman. Oh, what was she saying? It could come under public comments. Public comments. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> well, we should refrain from well, swearing on public TV, please. Okay. Um, anything else? So we have two things. We have um, uh, Reese's report is to the board, so that would fall into board correspondence. And then I do have an, um, an email from Gary DePace. All right. But Reese, do you want to? Um, this the board course. You, uh, to wow. Ask her to read. Uh, she has an amended copy, oh. so she, if she could read her her report under the board correspondence. Everyone has a copy, but I, it's my understanding Reese did amend it. Yes, okay. I did. And we'll get the full copy. All right. Sure. All right. Thank you. So I attended the Mass Narrow Conference uh last weekend sunday through tuesday and i promised that i would uh take copious notes which i did uh the first up was the town hall and i'm getting some feedback uh audio feedback is that yes okay, okay. Yeah, i'm trying to see um uh, Alex in uh, Hadley, could you just mute during this time until the question comes up? I think it's from that. Okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know how to do this. <laughs> okay, so the town hall was the initial um, uh, offering, 
and it was suggested that we use webinars for education of Board of Commissioners because Board of Commissioners come on all the time and they may not have a, a strong understanding of their roles. Uh, they su also suggested strongly that we use Robert's Rules of Order for Board of Commissioners. Um, and also there was an announcement that we will now have a Secretary of Housing in the state of Massachusetts. The number one issue will uh, statewide is housing and that um, uh, with this new Hadley Driscoll administration, or I'm sorry, Healy Driscoll. And the focus is to be to help people age in place. They're going to approve accessory dr dwelling units to reduce the need for public housing and use ARPA funding for modernization and rehab, which is good news for us. Uh, the smoke-free policy enforcement was a session I wanted to attend, but it was canceled. There were other sessions where smoking was addressed, so I'll have that later. I attended uh, the free attorney uh, uh, questions, uh, uh, several law firms were there and offered free sessions where we could ask anything. Uh, so I listened attentively uh, and was told, so medical marijuana card holders and reasonable accommodation of uh, people that have medical marijuana cards so that they could smoke in, the ho in their own home. However, the state law is clear on no smoking in units, no smoking of any kind, not even candles, which also comes later. Deviation could result in legal liability for housing authorities and board of commissioners, and that really hit. Uh, does not prevent tenant, though, from pressing for reasonable accommodations in courts or with legislature. So our tenants who want reasonable accommodation are free to seek it uh, through courts and legislature. Uh, but until it's court ordered or legislative change to accommodate, we should not change our policy to accommodate smoking mer medical marijuana inside units. Uh, no other combustibles inside units, no, like I said, candles, no smoking of any kind, no oil lamps, on and on. Uh, there was a long discussion about damage from paraffin, wax, and soot from candles on walls and surfaces. Uh, many people reported that it's very difficult to clean when you're turning over a, a unit. They recommend addressing candles and oil lamps specifically to reduce fire risk and asset damage. And the Board of Commissioners job is to preserve and protect assets, including building and property. Um, uh, also, we weren't the only ones that have select board interference on our concerns. Um, and, uh, so, we talked about a town or a, um, a municipality, select board, other departments within the town, interfering in some way with a housing authority or a board of commissioner and very very strongly it was said that state law prohibits town and select bar board department interference in any um select i mean i'm sorry uh, in any board of commissioner or housing authority cites the city of milford versus milford housing authority was a court case in the 60s uh, it, it, that clarified in the courts the state law from the 1930s and states that housing authorities are autonomous. So violation of this legal autonomy of housing authorities and our board of commissioners by interference of any town official for any reason, select board councils, departments, uh, and is seriously actionable. Uh, any plan or deliberation by town officials, rehousing authorities, or board of commissioners is, is actionable, as is a commissioner acting outside public meeting or with town official in collusion with town officials and departments. If the board of commissioner tolerates actions by a commissioner, 
committed without Board of Commissioner authorization by quorum. All Board of Commissioners are held responsible. This would also be true for select boards. Recommends Board of Commissioners, if funding permits, have ac access to its own attorney for legal advice if these issues are coming up. Recommends reporting interference by any town official directly to the district attorney and the uh, office, I mean, I'm sorry, the uh, open meeting law violations to the AG. Uh, we then went into a mock board meeting, what to do and what not to do in a board meeting. This was very illustrative, very, very helpful. If a commissioner comes in late, name and time must be noted in minutes. If a commissioner did not attend a meeting, must abstain on approval of minutes for any meeting not attended. Statutorily, a quorum is three for a board of commissioner, not three out of five. It has nothing to do with the numbers of people on a board of commissioner. Uh, it is for boards of commissioners, statutorily three. Uh, so some boards have seven people for some reason, uh, but they said three is the quorum. Do not identify tenants by name or unit number or verbally or in public docu documents under discussion. Add residents uh, that uh, except for if a, any member of the public that attends one of our meetings, their name and address should be noted. Um, but if a tenant is talking about or a member of the public is talking about another tenant, that's not allowed and the chair has to stop that. Um, it was stated that uh, provide all reports to a board of commissioners when agenda posted so every commissioner is ready when meeting begins, suggests if the commissioners are prepared, every board of commissioner meeting could end in 15 minutes, or at least that the warrant articles and reports could be voted on and all that business taken care of in 15 minutes. The agenda is opportunity to educate the public about the board of commissioner role and responsibility for this business meeting on expectation of proper decorum, rules set by chair for public comment session, no one may speak until recognized by the chair, not to use any names of tenants, I've already said that, use of recording devices, that A, any public comment made will not receive a response from the chair other than, and I quote, thank you for your comment, end quote, or B, direct the tenant to the grievance procedure. That's the extent of our response to any tenants, and this is recommended by the attorneys present. Public comment should remain within the items on the agenda to avoid violations of open meeting law. A member of the public interjecting a different topic prevents other members of the public tenants from uh, notice within 48 hours. The chair to state, quote, not a matter appropriate to come before the Board of Commissioners, end quote. If town official wishes to address the Board of Commissioner, refer them to the executive director and the Board of Commissioner Chair sets the ad agenda with collaboration of the Executive Director. Further, recommends use of sign-in sheet, uh, name, address, and topic wish to speak about for public tenants, uh, for the public and for tenants, with staff supervising. So if someone wants to speak about something not on the agenda, then that staff member pre-meeting can refer them to the appropriate staff member. A Board of Commissioner meeting is not an opportunity for tenants or the public to vent, complain, or express a grievance. Decorum must be ma maintained if member of publicly re uh, public refuses to comply. They can be removed by police for disturbing the peace. Board of Commissioner or individual commissioners must not intercede into tenant issues or meet with tenants without specific specific purpose and vote by the Board of Commissioner uh, in a quorum during a Board of Commissioner meeting. If a commissioner met with tenants without authority of Board of Commissioner, uh, the Board of Commissioners, they must recuse themselves from any related discussion and vote. 
Agenda items must be specific so that members of the public know in advance what will be discussed. Old business, just marking old business is not enough. Uh, must include specific what, quote, the old business will be deliver, deliberated. Chair can ask commissioner to resign under 121B for misconduct or dereliction of duty with letter of complaint to select board with statute attached. This action is a legal obligation of the Board of Commissioners, uh, but we need to read the bylaws for our Board of Commissioners and uh, make sure they're appropriate, avoid appearance of conflict between a Board of Commissioners and the Executive Director. The Executive Director is the expert that the Board of Commissioner hired to be the expert. Just as when you hire an attorney, it's prudent to follow the attorney's advice. I learned that our executive director is highly respected for her knowledge and professionalism, and that were, was multiple people in DHCD uh, executive directors throughout the state. Uh, the next session I attended was called Managing Residents in Today's Climate. This was primarily about how much worse mental health problems have been post COVID and how to help tenants with that. So there's a long list of warning signs for mental health issues, behavioral health and physical health issues that mimic mental and behavioral health problems. In general, new unexpected behavior can be a new physical illness. The only tool though that is available to our executive director is called the velvet hammer, which is giving a tenant a notice to quit uh, when there's lease violations or behavioral issues that violate the lease. Through that legal mechanism in housing court, the ED can write up a service agreement. So in other words, giving a tenant a notice to quit, a 30 day notice to quit allows the executive director and the attorney uh, to write up a service agreement as a proposal to the court. It can include social service organization involvement to cure the problem, be it hoarding, violence, bullying, or destroying the peaceful enjoyment by other, you know, of the other tenants. And recommends forming, re they do highly recommend forming relationships with agencies uh, such as adult and elderly services, service net, CSO, COA, AA, drug rehab, anger management classes, and mediation. Uh, I attended an optional Ask the Attorney session to find out more. Um, there, there, mo most of this advice would be for executive directors about smoking, um, uh, health, health and safety impacts on apartments, hoarding, stuff like that. I don't think we need to go through all that, uh, but it is in the report. Um, they did point out though that when it regards reasonable accommodation, accommodation only has to be reasonable. It does not have to be exactly what the tenant asked for. It can be something that will mitigate the tenant's issue. And they recommend that, um, well, this is again, this is more for executive directors, so it really doesn't apply to us at, on a board of commissioner. Okay. Uh, let's see, just a second, let me scroll down. I went to uh, a session called board member duties, roles and responsibilities and a board member roundtable. These are all together. Um, so Board of Commissioners shall give public comment period and allow concerns expressed. So very adamantly, the attorney and the um, uh, executive director present said that the law actually states shall. So we don't, on a Board of Commissioners, I mean, shall usually means legally that you absolutely will provide a public comment period and allow concerns to be expressed. Um, but they also highly recommend 
uh, that the tenant and the public submit those concerns in writing. That's usually a more effective way. Um, I heard a couple of different things. One is that the ED leading the meeting advocates for not restraining any comment from the public or the, from the tenants. Others in the room disagreed, pointing to must be with an agenda and decorum. Um, so that particular uh, executive director leading that meeting uh, recommended a resident advisory board. I don't really know what that is. I suppose I will learn soon. Um, but said it's a place for tenant information and education. Um, the presenter advocates for videotaping of board of commissioner meetings uh, so that uh, members of the public and tenants can then, you know, view it at their leisure. Um, let's see. And again said, when a tenant or a member of the public speaks, anyone in the public or a tenant say, the response should be from the chair, thank you for your comment, but do not give advice like call the office, just say thank you for your comment. Because tenant problems are almost never able to be addressed by the board. It's just not within our, um, it, it's just really not within our uh, role and responsibility. So my addendum is, I met with the head of information technology at DHCD, and this is the man that runs all the software that connects within our own housing authority every single piece of software. So there's different software programs used for different things, but they all interconnect. So when you put, uh, say the staff puts a, a a, a, a dollar amount or something in a field of software, it goes to all the other uh, software programs. It's, there's no way to mess it up. Um, it didn't used to be that way. He talked about how back in the day, 15 years ago, maybe even 10 years ago, it was all kind of done by hand and there were many opportunities for things to go wrong. That is no longer the case with this financial software, especially. So he says all DHCD software that Hadley Housing Authority uses, and frankly, every other housing authority in the state uses is fully integrated into the DHCD system. Entries into one field show up in all others. Reports generated match the data from all other reports. Audits are easily conducted and everything is audited from finances to widgets. Board of Commissioners can be very useful though, and this is limited to small housing authorities, which we don't really have now because we're in with uh, Amherst and Belchertown, we, we really have the benefit of a large housing authority with multiple directors. So hold on. Uh, it, he said, in the small housing authorities, boards of commissioners can be very useful, though, in reading contracts with vendors and making sure that the invoices submitted do not include services or goods outside the scope of the contract. Um, to, but we don't have that problem here because we have multiple layers of department heads, uh, we've got an in-house accountant, uh, we've got the fee accountant, we've got the executive director, we've got the director, we've got a lot of people looking at contracts and invoices. So uh, I don't even know that we would need to get involved in that. Uh, two board of commissioners and EDs pointed this out, that overcharging outside the scope of contract can be a problem, but it's a problem in small housing authorities that don't have multiple de department heads. I mean, some housing authorities only have an executive director. They have really no other employees except maintenance. So perhaps that would be helpful. I think it would be a time suck for us because we already have those layers of review. The ED is probably acutely aware when a vendor is not supplying the contracted services, and I, they are. In one instance, 
uh, a trash recycling vendor failed to make weekly removal as stated in the contract. A different company was then hired. It's that kind of thing. Okay, that's the end of mine. Thank you, Rick. Rick. Does anybody have any questions? I'm just going to unmute everybody. I think everybody's. Mary, say Mary, something. No, she is. Okay. Um, so um, if, if, if the if folks the over at the mental um, um, health need to comment, you are muted from your end. Good. You're Good. echoing, Pamela. Good. You're, you're, you're immediate now. Okay. <clears throat> Lisa, that's a wonderful uh, summary of your experience down there. I wish I could have attended, but I look forward to the one in June. Worth. You got your money's worth, I think. Yeah, so um, I what I have is um, a board is correspondence and email from Gary DePace in the Department of Housing. I did follow up, Harry, on your request to change the um, about how how and if we could change the fiscal year. And um, they did advise. Let me see if I can sh I can share my screen. Way too many things open, so I do. Okay. Oh, wrong one. Sorry. Sorry. Alex, can you enlarge that? Okay. So the board of housing, uh, the board of housing and community development did advise that it, you could do that. Um, so what the email from Evelyn was saying, she checked with IO. Uh, and I apologize, I don't know, uh, the, the head of finance at DHCD. And she writes, in a situation where a housing authority has only state-aided units and no HUD or federal units and would like to change its fiscal year end, the housing authority must submit in writing an official request to DHCD from the housing authority, indicating that the board has approved the plan change before DHCD can give its approval. So that was from DHCD. And then I forwarded this information to uh, Gary along with a couple of questions I have about our IRS. Um, if we have to um, do something with the IRS. Um, and what Gary wrote is, uh, Pamela, based on what DHCD has indicated and based on the reasons why you would change the fiscal year or year end from the IRS, I see no reason why Hadley would want to change their fiscal year. What really? Tim, it looks like you just became muted. Your mic is muted. Thank you. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, I'm not sure where I got muted, uh, but Gary DePace is, uh, wrote that um, it is his professional opinion that we do not change the fiscal year. And, and, and his frustration is also like um, ours as well and that the Department of Housing really should uh, be issuing the budget guidelines ahead of time. Um, but we do have the guidelines or we do have the, the way the mechanism to do if that's what the board uh, approves. So that's all I have. Thank you. All right. Any more correspondence from the board? No. Move on. Uh, executive, executive director's report. Uh, no, we're uh, yeah. So yep. So then that Sorry. would be the first one would be the financials. So executive director reports. Yeah. yeah so there's just a little change in the way that the the agenda is written now, uh, based on what we've been hearing for a couple of of uh, conferences, is that the executive director's report really is all of these reports that um, we present throughout the meeting. So the we are going to go into the financials like we normally do, and it would be the warrant report. Okay, yes. All right, we're on a warrant report. Everybody look at those. Any questions? 
I, I do have a question because I'm so new. Yeah. I've seen on the past several warrant reports, eyewash, mm. first aid, all this kind of stuff. Can somebody just refresh me on why we're spending so much money on that? Want me to take that one, Carrie? <laughs> sure. <laughs> so um, we are, uh, housing authorities now do fall under um, OSHA guidelines as well. There were some wiggle room in previous years, but it, it has come through that we do have to follow that. So we are required to have an eyewash station, a first aid station and things of that nature. And Cintas also does, um, they service our bathrooms here, we, you know, soap, cleaning products so that everything is consistent and okay. um, in compliance with the law. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And Risa, just um, a, a side note too, they also supply the uniforms for our maintenance men. So um, on the first page, you don't see it, but on subsequent ones, you might see um, uniforms included in that, in the invoices. Thank you. Anything else? Am I, am I unmuted? Yes. Can't tell whether I am or you, whether I'm not. Uh, under the, uh, excuse me? got a question oh all right harry go ahead under the gary DePay cpa uh, i went back and looked uh when we've paid in july when we had our july meeting we're paying june's when we're august july september now we're paying october why are we paying invoices back in may and june because I'm gary didn't I'm sorry, Harry. Um, the the check was lost. Gary did not receive that check that included me. In I'm sorry, I was muted. Um, uh, Gary did not receive the check. So for for the services of May and June, so we voided the check and I reissued it. So that's why you're seeing May and June now. Is October not on Repeat here? That. Hmm? Are we muted again? No, he just unmuted you. Okay. This is not working for me. <laughs> you, you need to speak. He, he can speak now. Yeah. yeah. Can, can we unmute him? You're unmuted. Oh, go ahead. Try it. Try it, Harry. Try it. Frustrated is more of more of the correct uh, emotion. Why then? Can you hear me now? I don't know whether I'm muted, unmuted here. This is more I can hear you, Matt. Thank you. So in October, this is our November meeting. We're paying the October warrants. Why are we not paying Gary to pay for October's services? Because I haven't received that invoice yet. I can't pay an invoice if I don't have it. Hmm. Okay. Other than that, I would move to accept the warrants and the bills to be paid. Also, then made to it. Uh, is there a second? I second. All in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Passed. Uh, Treasurer's report. Any questions on this? Am I unmuted? Yes. Yes, I have some questions. I've noticed the last handful of months, our Greenfield Savings account is depleting. Was at one point ninety six thousand, then ninety three, then seventy fifty in September, forty three in October. Um, we're paying about the same amount of bills. Does that have any reference or reflection to the subsidy that we get from the DHCD to replenish the bank account to pay our bills? Again, the checking account is our revolving account. The money that comes in is from our tenants' rents and interest or um, subsidy. The t money that goes out is the bills that are paid. So it's going to fluctuate every month, whether it comes up or down, depending on what invoices are out there and what tenants have been paying. Um, this month, we did not receive any subsidy. Um, so that is not included in those balances.
So is it fair to say that the bank balance in the checking account could continue to decrease based on tenant rents and the subsidy from the DHCD? And the amount the of and the amount of invoices that we receive. Correct. That's yes. their assumption on my part. Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> Anything else? Um, just one question that's um, kind of lurking out there. I remember prior meetings, we've had this discussion, maybe just a revisit re, uh, or a further explanation on the laundry money, please. These numbers now are quite different than earlier months uh, that I've been on the board, so I, I'm not sure what's happening with that. So we, I'm sorry. So um, last, I can't even remember when now, last year or a year and a half ago, we purchased new machines, which brought the laundry money into a deficit um, because there was not enough money in the account at that time to purchase the machines. So currently the account is negative. As we collect the laundry money each month, um, it brings the dollar amount obviously more positive. The amount of the receipts is half of what we can keep. Half of it goes towards our utilities. The second half goes to offsetting the laundry balance. So just for the accounting here, the receipts came in at 406 and 50 cents. Half of that goes to the utilities, half goes to reducing the negative deficit balance because we purchased new machines correct okay i don't completely understand lo the laundry the laundry account so uh <laughs> i uh i understand we bought the new machines do you do you have anything on that on the laundry explain can can we have one of the uh, tenants speak just a little bit briefly on that is that possible no, not right now no no oh, oh okay then we'll bring it up at another meeting all right thank you wait, wait. get a vote to put it on the agenda for the next meeting can i can i uh, excuse me all right mr chairman uh, mr chairman so i i mr chairman, chairman. Just Mr. Chairman, so if I can Mr. just, Chairman. Uh, oh, go ahead, Pamela, wait for okay. yeah. So it's by budget guidelines, any funds that come in through the laundry, half of it has to go to the utilities and the other half goes into an account for ex expenses. So uh, of the purchasing of the new equipment. So we do have Gary DePace on the on the line too, who's going to be talking to us about our budget, and he can update you further. But this is a budget item. This is, and we have to follow the budget guidelines of the Department of Housing. Does that help at all, Harry, or do you have further questions? Oh, that that's fine for me to understand. I, <clears throat> well, I've already asked if you could speak, and they told me no. So I'm got to follow. John, did you have a question? John. What's that? Okay. Richie asked you if you had a question. You were ready to put something out there. Um, I just wanted to um, uh, ask, too, about the laundry account. We had had several discussions in the past about accounting for that money separately. Are we doing that? Yes. Yes. Um, so if I can ask, can I ask for uh, Gary, Gary DePace, can you, can you chime in here and how that that's taken care of? Because it Gary's, is a different line in. Excuse me, Gary's mic isn't working. He's going to be calling in. Okay. Thank you. So just, if we'll give um, him a minute. Just the laundry. It is separate. It's in a separate savings account. Um, oh, okay. And, and do we have a, a separate accounting uh, by the month? What, what what went in and what came out of the account? Yes, it's it's a line item on the bottom, and you can see on the bottom of the treasurer's report. Okay. You can see the past week 
or the past month. And then on. And Gary has COVID, so let me. Okay. See. Gary, are you okay? Can, can you hear me? I think your phone is um, muted, Gary. Mr. Chairman, could uh, John and Harry mute their microphone? There's too much disturbance from the public in the back. Oh, my God. Yeah. Gary, are you? Oh, here he comes. Fine. Hi, Gary. You're. I guess it, we're having problems, but can um, I have you on on speakerphone? Can everyone yeah. hear? Can everybody hear Gary? Oh, Gary, say something. Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Gary. Go ahead. Okay. I've been listening, and the laundry fund years ago, the board voted a policy. And it's very detailed, and I think they should get a copy of that. Uh, but we are accounting for it properly. You're getting monthly reports of the balance that you have on that policy is your do's and don'ts of the laundry fund. Um, so that might be the next step is please get a copy of that. Mm -hmm. OK, thank you. Thank you. Are you all set, uh, I think, Harry? I think Harry's got a question. Richard, Rich, yes. we, we couldn't really, Gary can turn up his volume. We really couldn't hear um, what he was saying. It's very uh, soft muted or something. I, I'm i not a technical widget here, but uh, I don't really know what's going on with this. That's true. <clears throat> Gary, I'm sorry, can you try that again? Can anyone hear me? Is that any better? Can you hear him, Harry? I can. Everything is echoing because I'm on my phone and the computer. Can Can you pull up a volume on our end here? It's not. It's not our end. It's their end. Their end. Because she has. Is it there on your phone? She prepared using okay. her phone. I hope they can hear better. Um, yeah, they're talking yeah. amongst themselves. Then that's part of the problem. Why don't Harry, you just paraphrase what he says? Paraphrase. <laughs> Go ahead and paraphrase what he said. Okay. So what Gary, Gary I'm going to paraphrase. What Gary is saying is that there is, um, so in addition to uh, budgetary guidelines, the Hadley Housing Authority has a policy, a detailed policy on the laundry funds, and that Gary suggests that we provide you a copy of that and then um, so that you can have more information. And that we do a detailed um, accounting of it in the treasurer's report, um, but I will get you a copy of that for the next meeting. Did you hear that? Yes. Yes. Thank you. All right. Any any other discussion on treasurer's report? All right. I need a motion. I move we accept the treasurer's report. Is there a second? Second. Uh, all in favor? Passed. Aye. 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 Passed. Okay, the fiscal year 2023 budget vote. Any questions? <clears throat> Who would I need to meet with to answer my questions on the proposed 2023 budget and when can that be done i got this budget a week before the october meeting on the 28th and this is three weeks into november so it's been just a little over four weeks i have a number of questions uh, who would i have to meet with to have those uh, addressed kerry or gary DePace? 
who put this budget together? Uh, my first question. Gary to paste it, and he's here to answer any questions you have now. Okay. I'm not going to ask the questions now. I'm going to ask the question with him. So then you can still ask for the vote. All right. Uh, I still need a, we're going to still uh, have the vote. I need a motion made to accept. I move that we accept the annual budget. There are a second. I'll do I'll, I'll do a second. All in favor? Aye. Nay. Nay. So, so, gentlemen, I do have to advise you that it is regulatory and that you have a fiduciary responsibility to accept the budget and that we have to submit the budget by the end of the month, otherwise we're late, which will hold up our funding it will hold up our capital dollars, it will hold up our subsidy, and it is an, an audit finding. It is detrimental to the housing authority and the tenants not to not to perform your fiduciary responsibility. Gary, do you have anything to add to that or did I cover that? What do you want to do? No. So, Pamela, yeah, I just want to say that uh, actually, I've seen that budget at a different time. If anyone had any questions, they could have addressed it with us. Uh, prior to that, um, um, does not change uh, the budget? Uh, but my recommendation would be to get this budget in place. It includes the maximum allowable by DHCD, and um, the movement of line items could always happen later in the budget year. Okay, did you did you hear that, or do you need me to paraphrase? Yeah. Um, let me let me suggest a way out of the box here. Um, it, it's clear to me that we don't have a, a a majority vote on this right now. But but there is nothing wrong with us asking Gary to meet with our treasurer and holding now and holding another short meeting once the treasurer is satisfied. So and and I'll I'll make that a motion. So, Gary, you're actually in Florida, aren't you? Yeah, so, our fee accountant is in, so he's in Florida right now and he's joining virtually. Um, and again, he prepared this budget in plenty of time and there was lots of time for us to ask questions previously. Um, it does have to be approved and submitted prior to November 30th. And with that Thanksgiving week, um, the fee accountant being out of town, and this is the responsibility of the entire board, not just the treasurer of the board. How, how was the budget prepared, Gary, when the DHCD guidelines didn't come out until that first week of October? How'd you have the budget done before then? Gary, hello. <laughs> Am I muted? No. Gary's muted. You're not muted. <laughs> No, he, he heard them. Did you hear? They're talking. They don't. Chair. Did you hear that, Harry? I did not I hear anything. I would like to address the chair. Would you please ask the public and tenants to cease talking? I cannot hear Harry or John. There's too much interference from the public. Well, uh, I'm sitting in the room with the Harry. Problem is, you have too much background noise. You have to keep them quiet. Um, Mr. Chairman, I'm yes. sitting in the room with them, and they haven't made a peep. Well, so I don't know where the... you get. You're getting a lot of noise from your your background. Well, don't blame it on the tenants. They haven't made a peep. I didn't I just said? So Harry, what Gary, what Gary DePace said was that he prepared the budget very quickly after the budget lines guidelines came out and got them right over. They were not prepared beforehand. All right, so I'll ask Gary some questions. Is that what you'd like me to do? If you have I questions, can do that. I can do that. But I want to be able to hear his answers. Do 
the uh, operating subsidy from the DHCD continues to increase from year to year to year. What's the reason for that? Did you hear that, Gary? We cannot hear Gary if he's speaking. He's not speaking yet. Okay. Thank you, Pamela. Okay, you want, so I'll start while you're looking. So, so each year that the, the D, uh, DHCD um, issues those public guidelines, um, and as Reese can attest to too, from sitting in the plenary session or the DHCD um, opening session, they showed how um, for a number of years we were actually level funded, which is a bad thing. Um, is so that your our annual um, did not increase over those years. Since I believe 2013, 2014, each year the state legislature has put more money into public housing, which then allows the Department of Housing to increase our subsidies. And then they give the budget guidelines that allow, um, th this year it's 9%, correct, Gary? Yes. Um, Yep, so it's 9%. Last year it was 5%, but for many years it was level funded. So the Department of Housing increasing the, um, the, the subsidy is a good thing. It's not, it's not, it's not a bad thing. That's correct. The same technological problems down here, but uh, the increase in the subsidy is exactly from the appropriations from the from the department of housing and community development also the year-end report that we did also showed that um, they owe us over a hundred thousand dollars in cash uh, from prior subsidy never mind advancing the subsidy of this year of 136,000. so our cash flow will certainly help once the hcd gets these this budget approved and gets our year-end report. Harry, were you able to hear that, Harry and um, John? Yes, we heard that. Okay, perfect. Thanks, Gary. Anything else, Harry? Under the administrative expenses, what's the category account number 4190, administrative other? That seems to be jumping up, but what is that? Like a catch-all bucket for any other expenses? I don't know what that is. It's forms, it's phone costs. The biggest part of our 4190 is the management fee paid to Amherst. Um, and again, that's you can see that breakdown of what we budgeted for. Um, in that. So we pay Amherst ten thousand nine hundred and seventy six dollars every month. Correct? No. So that's what we just thought. Uh, we just paid on the water bill ten thousand nine hundred and sixty two dollars. I've looked back yeah. at some other ones. They're over ten thousand dollars. I'm sorry. Hold on, Carrie. Gary has an explanation. Carrie, that bill that we pay cameras every month has backup of that. It includes the management fee, which is the basic fee calculated by the schedule that I provided. It also includes administrative staff support, and it also includes maintenance support with maintenance contracts. Did you get that, Harry? Yes, I did. So roughly, approximately $10,000 or whatever that number is every month. Let's just use 10,000 for the sake of math. 
that 120 odd thousand that we pay for management fees, salaries, maintenance supplies, and whatever else is in that bucket, it's really being subsidized by the DHCD. Because we get 139,000 or 136,000 from them. I see everybody nodding, so I'm assuming that's correct. That is correct. Okay. Now, just explain to me one last time if we don't vote this budget today or by the end of the month, we are in violation of what? As I took the training, I don't recall this. What are we in violation of? Do you have something specific, or do you want me to? As Pamela mentioned, uh, if we I can't hear him. him, I can't hear him. So what Gary is saying is that uh, according to the budget guidelines, they do issue the dates through the, the budget guidelines of when we are requested to get those um, budgets in. If the, uh, the budgets are not within, I'm just going to mute this for one second, Gary. If we're not, if the budget is not in um, within those timelines, we will have an audit finding for a late submission and then our capital budget and our subsidies it will be can be held up. We will not get the subsidy from the Department of Housing until the budget is approved. So once the budget is all, so Gary has um, prepared the budget. It comes before the board. The board approves the budget, and then the budget is submitted to the Department of Housing, and the Department of Housing also has to approve the budget. So if there's still a lengthy process after this. So this is why they have these deadlines, and we may not hear from the Department of Housing until late December, January, February, that they approve it. And in the meantime, we will not receive any subsidy until it's well, completely I don't, I don't want to hold that. I don't want to hold up that. Um, and Gary did say I could briefly hear this budget is not etched in stone. Once it's approved, you can move money between line items or question things and still move things around, as long as you stay within the parameters of what you've approved. That is correct. And then any time, Harry, between um, any time that we move things or there's more money spent or even less money spent, that's um, plus or minus 10% of the approved budget, we are obligated to do a budget revision. And then that comes before the board. The board does the revision, and it goes to um, approves the revision, and it goes through that same process of going to the Department of Housing for approval. So it is it is it is a working document. So moving forward, that's one of the reasons I suggested changing the fiscal year, because the DHC budget guidelines come out late for our fiscal year is October one to September thirtieth, and in addition to that. Um, gives us time to look at the budget and put the budget together and we'd be on a January 1 to December 31st fiscal year. That's why I was suggesting we look at that because of the DHCD's uh, involvement with us with the budget guidelines. Understood, but even the different fiscal year, um, the different fiscal year ending, um, it's in the budget guidelines that Gary had given you too. It has the dates for January 1. They have to submit, I believe it's December 15th. Does that sound right, Gary? That's correct, Pamela. And the, the thing that we want to look at is that just by changing our fiscal year, we would be uh, three months behind in our funding uh, that we would get any increases from the DHCD. And that's the real answer is DHCD, and maybe we'll get that under the new governor's administration, uh, is the ability of DHCD to issue guidelines in May, as they used to probably 23 years ago. All right. Well, I certainly don't want to hold up the subsidies while we're while we're dealing with this. So, would you ask for a recall of the vote on the budget, and I will change my vote. Okay. All right. We'll take another vote then. Motion made to accept the fiscal fiscal year budget twenty three. I move we accept. There a second. I'll, I'll second, second it. it. All in favor? 
Aye. 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 Yes. And I'm sorry, John, just for the record, because you have your mask on, did you vote yes or no? Yes. Thank you. Yeah, we have a unanimous vote. Thank you. All four members voted yes. Thank you. Thank I you. still would like to meet with Gary, though. All right. Yeah. Property manager's report. Uh, unit base vacancy report. Okay, you, uh, Mary? Where is the property manager? Yeah. Is she here? She, can't, uh, she should be able to. Mary, can you hear us? She's unmuting. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, Ms. Can you unmute her? Can you? No. Can, can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Property manager's report. Uh, unit, unit vacancy report. Got it. Just pulling the report up. Um. <clears throat> So, what are we on, Rich? We are on a property manager's report. Unity, okay, thank you. Unit vac vacancy report. Got it. Thank you. Are you seeing me? Oh, she's looking it up, I think. Oh. I don't have it. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes. If, if if I heard it correctly, these reports are part of the uh, director's um, report. And if that's the case, why don't we just have her comment on the vacancy um, rate and and keep things moving along? That's what I'm trying to do here. Very that's very good. So we do have um, our vacancies. Um, we just housed somebody recently, so we're at this day, as of this day, we have the two vacancies um, at Golden Court, and then we're still um, with the, we're finishing up a vacancy at Berkeway, um, and we have a, another vacancy. So we have two at Berkeway and just two at Golden Court at this time. <clears throat> it does report three but we were able to house somebody just this week. Um, in October, it was that. Looking at the accounts receivable, we have we do have some people that are applying for raft, um, and I have a couple of people that were working with um, payment agreements and I did have a couple of 30-day notices that I have sent out um, for additional people to apply for raft because again you cannot go to raft and collect raft money if you don't have a 30-day notice so if anyone has any questions any questions? Okay. That's it. You don't have to approve these. These are just information. Right. Okay. Facilities, uh, capital. Had to get the mic unmuted there. So we have. Um, Everyone's probably wondering about the window project. Um, that's a slow process. We had the uh, uh, asbestos testing done last week. That this testing has the results have to come back before DHCD, Department of Housing, can give their final notices on the design plan that was been submitted by the architect. And once DHCD makes their comment, we can go to bid on the windows. So that's the window project. Um, we did have another project come up. It was, um, we had a the Department of um, Public Works in Hadley contacted me a few weeks ago and said there's a big water leak in our water main at the uh, development. Um, we are responsible for the water main from the street 
all the way through Golden Court and also Burke Way. We th that water main is like a six inch water main. It's our responsibility. And um, we've had two repairs before I came on board. And so this was the first one that came up to me, was, was made known to me. And um, we had to replace a fire hydrant that was leaking. And so I got multiple bids and uh, got that progress, pro um, that project in motion. As we were replacing the hydrant, we found a valve leaking as well. Seems like we have some old pipes down there. And uh, we had to replace the valve um, as well. I am submitting this as uh, an emergency repair since it came on kind of sudden. And there's a process for that. I first have to create a project in something called CPS. And um, yes. that, that has been created. And then it has to get, uh, we have to update our capital improvement plan to include that. And then they can assign a fish number, they call it a fish number in Cap Hub. And once that happens, then we can, you know, uh, get reimbursed for the funds that we've had to spend. Some of that, some of those um, invoices that have come up, you know, is to take care of this, uh, this water leak. Um, so that's our main thing on our, on our um, projects right now. We also have the, uh, Mary was just talking about a um, unit over there to there's two units at Burke Way. And we want to fund those with our capital improvement funds, but we needed to wait till we had the funds available and all the budgets were approved. And we do have projects listed in order to take, because we've had to put new cabinets, new floors, new windows. We had quite extensive work in both uh, two different units. I won't mention the unit numbers, but two different units at Berkway needed a lot of work. Um, one of them I've had multiple contractors out giving me bids right now. Um, but again, we can't get those actually funded in there till everything's approved, and um, and that should be coming up. We you know should be coming up shortly. Um, as far as though that was it on the capital, I could answer any other questions on capital projects, and then uh, I also have a work order reports there that uh, kind of summarizes some of the work we've been doing. Any questions on either one? I'd be happy to answer. Are there any questions? I don't know. Nope. Okay. Move on. Uh, policies. Does everybody look at it? Got a fair, a fair housing policy? That's this one here. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes, John. Um, is the, does the uh, does Pamela recommend we approve this? Yes, John. So this is um, the two policies that we're presenting today are the two new policies that were that go also with that reasonable accommodation policy that is coming down from the Department of Housing as must have policies. Um, and this is like the policy that you folks approved last month, the reasonable accommodation one. It is a, a DHCD template. And the only thing that was changed on either of the policies is um, the name of the housing authority. So How Hadley Housing Authority and HHA. And then each of the policies did also require that we um, we do the demographics for the town um, and for the population of the housing authority. And, um, all, and then the, the language access plan is the, the demographics of the town um, and the housing authority with the languages spoken. Um, and then the other thing that I'd like to point out about the fair housing marketing plan is that um, DHCD is advised is is not advising. We have to follow um, the local county seat or the the largest uh, municipality closest to your town. So though so even though Hadley is a how a small housing authority and a in a small town, we do have to follow. The goal is to follow the. Um, the demographics to strive to get the demographics to match Springfield, Massachusetts. Um, so that's outlined in this policy. 
So uh, the commissioners, if they approved it today, could modify it uh, in the future if we needed to. Is that correct? That that is correct. Yeah. Then I'll move that we accept it. Vote. Uh, uh, and vote on both of them. Was that uh, just the first one? Yeah, we just do oh. uh, one at a time. Yeah. Uh, fair housing. Uh, and a motion made to. That was. Accept the policy. Motion made. Second. I second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Now we go to the language policy. Please explain that one to me. Again, this maybe, is just. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Tamara. Maybe you could explain this quickly. So the language policy is it's to ensure that tenants and applicants and the public that we deal with are not um, are not hindered from applic uh, of a from participating in our programs. So the housing authorities are mandated to have um, language access policies and, and a plan in place so that we can effectively communicate in the language of the tenant, the participant, or the general public um, so that there's a full understanding of how to participate um, in the programs and for questions they may have. So our policy outlines what the, the um, Hadley Housing Authority does. And in a nutshell, what we do is we are able to translate documents in um, in the majority of the languages that folks may come to us with. So important documents like a lease or an application. If somebody is a Spanish speaker or um, we do um, one of the uh, uh, Haitian Creole, we have a, a, a good population of that in Hadley too, of those uh, speakers, we can put the application in into those language for their ease. Um, if somebody comes to the window here in Hadley, we have what's called an I speak card. And that card says, it literally translates I speak into about 50 different languages. And you can give that to the person at the window and they can point to the la their language. And then we have um, an agreement with um, Language Connections which is a translating group out in Boston. And we pick up the phone and um, we call into the, the uh, person's telephone too. And we can, we have translation, uh, on-demand translation services. And then these, these translation services are also available for conferences, um, um, private meetings, all kinds of things. So it's it's really it's a policy to protect the public and the tenants and to make sure that they are they are receiving services in their native tongue. So the uh, procedure would be the same thing as would occur like in the hospital where there are placards that say if uh, if you speak uh, Creole, um, let us know and we'll get somebody here to uh, translate. That's absolutely correct. Yep. All right, then I move. I move, Mr. Chairman. I move to. Yes. Uh, I move that we accept it. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yeah. All right. Now, By the way, when you talk to somebody from uh, uh, Cape Verde, just yeah. uh, if it's in the morning, say bon dia. Bon dia. Got it. <laughs> okay. Commissioner discussion. Um, uh, select board liaison and interference. So in the and that so we have two items on and then we have the three that uh, Mr. Allen added asked to request and it was voted to add right. to so the governor's appointment the management agreement oh what was the third one Pam what's the third one virtual Thanks. meeting yes Thank you. Thanks Bruce <laughs> virtual meeting All right. So the select board liaison and interference was also, so we talked about this at a previous meeting, and then it was asked by a commissioner to put that on for a further uh, explanation. And I do believe that was um, that was from you, Mr. Allen. Did you have questions about that? About what, I'm sorry, say again? The, the select board, that was one of the items that you had asked at a previous meeting to have put on for the information, because myself and um, Reese, and Mary Gillian went to a select board's meeting on Richard's behalf and spoke to the select board about the the overstepping of the select board into the, the business of the housing authority. 
and then you had questioned that and asked that it would be put on on the agenda. Oh, is that why it's on the agenda today? Yes, it is. Yeah. Well, I guess I only had a simple question was, were, and I wanted to ask the chairman, uh, were, were the people who went before the Board of Selectmen, was that accurate that they were speaking for you? Because the issue yeah. never came before, the, the issue never came before your board. That's all. Who were speaking for me at the time, yes. Pardon? At the board, at the select board meeting. Yeah. That's what you're asking? Yes. Yeah. I'm asking if they were speaking for you. Is that yeah. accurate? Okay. And we will be going back to the select board. They gave us um, two dates, one in November and one in December. Um, and the, uh, they're both at the select board meets on Wednesdays. Um, and Wednesdays is not a great day, but and they are, they're on at uh, Richard's request. I asked if they could uh, have a special meeting and they don't believe that this warrants a special meeting. So we will be going December um, 7th, December 7th. Um, we will be on the agenda to discuss this again. And as is just going to point out again, I mean, Reese, uh, the information that Reese gave in her board report is um, is following up on what we've been saying in our board meetings, what our attorneys and our fee accountants said when they came to the board chaining in August. Um, it is just further um, solidifying and verifying that the information that's being given to the board in the select uh, board in the select board liaison is absolutely co correct. Um, and it just is causing um, dissension between the board members. We have two board members in the senior center with tenants and the select board person in the Hadley media. And we have other folks meeting virtually as we had decided to do. Um, so, and it's, and it's causing a lot of issues with the housing authority that just don't need to be happening. So that's what I'll say about that. Yes, John, you were gonna say? Oh. No, that's it. It's it's your issue. You guys go ahead and bring it up with the board of selectmen and work it out. Um, it's, it's certainly not my issue. Uh, Reese is raising her hand. Re yes, Reese. It's it's not our issue as a board of commissioner. It is an actionable um, behavior by the select board. And from what the attorneys told me, it is actionable with the district attorney who would launch an investigation. It, it right. it's, well, you, you, all on. I'm asking, all I'm asking. Wait, John, let, let, let me let finish. Yeah. So I can't give advice to the select board or the chair of the select board, but I can say from what the attorneys for DHCD told me, is that every single board member is responsible when one interacts with and takes recommendations from the select board, the select board chair, or any department. In other words, none of us individually can represent ourselves as speaking for the select board and go to, for instance, the board of health asking for advice without the permission of the rest of and a vote by the rest of the board of commissioners we cannot do that we cannot go talk to the select board chair or anybody on the select board or in any department of the town and it's actionable on every single board of commissioner member all right mr chairman that the problem with the argument Risa is making is that you did, you collectively did exactly that before the Board of Selectmen. There was never any vote of the Board of Commissioners to do that. And you spoke without the authority of the board. I spoke, and so, I spoke yes, with the authority of the chair. Yes. So, so but, but you just explained that no one member can do that. No, that's not what I said. So that, 
I'm sorry, Risa. So the, um, Richard has given me the floor. So the chairperson does have higher responsibility than than um, an authority than other members. They don't. They cannot unilaterally make decisions. But Richard is attempting to gain control of his his board. Um, and with all due respect, Mr. Allen, it's it's the involvement that you are having with the town. It's it's the emails that you are having with um, Selectman Nevin Smith, with the public health, with the Hadley media. You are the one that are having the e the email conversations, telephone conversations with all of these folks. It's not the chairperson. It is not Reese who is doing these things in open meeting. And that's the problem. It is it is it is these clandestine conversations that are having that are being had about the housing authority without even a, a, with all due respect, without the knowledge of how housing authorities work on the top part of the town well, excuse, and on the part of brand excuse, new commissioners. Excuse me. I'm one of the few people, Harry being the other one, who has gone through the DHCD training. And I might ask how the rest of the commissioners are proceeding and getting their training so that they know what is acceptable and what isn't acceptable. Yeah. So the That's training, the that the, the, so the five hour training does not make you an, an, ex, an expert to the point of that you sent an email to Reese and Harry, again, in violation of open meeting laws, asking them when they were at converse, in conference, to, uh, at conference to get clarification on whether it's true that housing authorities are autonomous. It is, it is in legislature. It is, it is Massachusetts law, and you're still questioning it when you took the training from the Department of Housing. I never purported that the Housing Authority was not independent. I took the training, and I understand that. So your issue is not with me. So then why did you send that email, sir? I have a copy of the email that you sent asking that question. Asking what question? You asked Harry and Reese when they were at the mass conference, the mass narrow conference, to get clarification on whether or not housing authorities are autonomous from the town government. I so what? Okay, that's you're just you're just con contradicting that. So again, I'm saying because you took a five hour training, it does not make you an expert in housing authorities. In fact, you you are bucking the system every way along along the oh. way. All they had to say was, yes, the committee or the NARO did confirm that they are independent. That's all. So are, are the housing authorities attorneys, attorney John Leibel and attorney Elaine O'Donnell and Gary DePace came to a board training in um, August and explained it was August is, and explained all of this. And you still had questions, including the open meeting violations of the continuous emails between the board members of deliberations of topics, how meetings are held, um, what's happening with uh, what, how the two of you are in that room with tenants in the select board in the Hadley Housing Authority. It's it's above and beyond to the select board member being provided by you the telephone number of Reese so that she could text message Reese about the appropriateness of a, of a virtual meeting. It's way, it's out of hand. It's out of order. All right, I'll tell you what, You here's my recommendation for you. If you believe I have committed an open meeting law violation, then file the complaint absolutely. and then we'll talk about it. Absolutely. Okay, yep. you file the absolutely. complaint. Absolutely. Uh, I have a tenant that would like to speak to that, or would you like that no, person to wait for public? I didn't finish. Public comments. So at public comments, then that person could speak. Yes. And as for having the meeting here today, I tried desperately last Monday and was informed that it could possibly be the meeting in the community room. And I only found out yesterday that it couldn't be when, if you knew it couldn't be, I could have been told that last Wednesday or Thursday. And so having the meeting here accommodated not only John and I to have access to the meeting because we can't get this MS Microsoft Teams on our computers, and I can't speak for the Hadley Media. They're, they're going to be somewhere to tape our program like they did the last meeting. But um, this gave the tenants, and they've been very 
very patient and very quiet and very respectful today and they've listened to all the meeting and I think I've accomplished the fact that they can participate in this meeting and it's still virtual. We're all virtual, but we happen to be here, like you're Point, over there. May I speak to that? Yes. Point of clarification, you were advised that you could come to the housing authority into the community room, just like you were last week. Richard and I are in the community room. So, the it, and on that, uh, okay, and I'm sorry, so- And, we'll and you would have been fine if the tenants, room. and you would have been fine if the tenants also were, were in, in the community room today. We would not have been. The tenants can join virtually. So we don't hear those, that background noise, gentlemen? Because we absolutely heard the background noise. Okay, right. let's, let's try to be so respectful on both ends here, um, please. Governor's appointee. All right, we're on a governor's appointee right now. Uh, yeah, that was John's. John, of course, yeah. you asked for the governor, governor's appointee? No, no, I just wanted to know why it took until September uh, to notify uh, DHCD of the, the vacancy on the okay. Board of Commissioners. So respectfully, as was previously advised, is that there was, that you had come on in May and that, that we, we were staggering when people were going to be coming on because having multiple new members can cause a problem. Um, Kristen notified the town of Hadley and she notified the, the housing authority that she would not be seeking another seat. Um, DHCD, and she also notified DHCD at that time. The new regulations that have been promulgated, excuse me, um, about that is that now they need this official form, which we've never had that form before. So that's when the form went in September, when Evelyn Mousse advised me she needed the form. Mr. Chairman, my yes. question is, why wasn't DHCD notified in either June or July or August. You just, Pamela just answered that. And how did she answer it? They needed a uh, different kind of form to send it. Well, in. when did they come out with the form? They came out with the form, I believe, last year, John, but I wasn't aware of that previously. I wasn't okay. aware of it. The Department of Housing comes out with lots of public housing and notices, and I was not aware of that form. But the other part of it, too, was that we had four board members. So that we were letting people get in and get acclimated, acclimated to the position, and that we would be going for the the resident board member spot, which we uh, were we? able to fill. Who's, the, who's board, the, the board, the board, the chairperson, and the folks on the board, including uh, Harry, right. who's sitting right next to you. All right. Let me get something really clear. The chairman has in writing uh, um, the authority to make certain decisions. But what is understood by every public body going who elects a chairman is that the chairman serves at the pleasure of the board. And the reason that's the case is because the board can vote the chairman off the chairmanship. So that's why Risa and others have said to, today that the board should be meeting together to discuss these positions and then the board can can have chairman can express them so these were discussed at board meetings previous to you joining mm -hmm. so i'm 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 sorry sir it just that is what it is okay. so are we okay. done with let's that part want to go to the next part all let's right. let it be uh, management agreement all right our management agreement Yes, I've been seek seeking for five or six months a management agreement that is signed by all parties. And all the, and Pamela has been very helpful at getting me agreements, but none of them have been signed by the DHCD. And right in the agreement, it says that the agreement is not effective until it is signed by the DHCD. So all I'm looking for, Mr. Chairman, is a copy of the signed by DHCD agreement. And I can either, uh, and I'll, I'll seek the board's approval to either get it from Pamela or from DHCD in Boston. And that's why I'd like a vote. 
So you, you don't need a vote to get, I don't believe, I don't believe you need a vote by protocol in order to get a copy of it. It's not, it was not my understanding in any of the times that I've provided you with a copy of the management agreement that you were looking for a signed copy. So, but again, to my further um, or my previous comment was that DHGD has been encumbering documents and budgets and all kinds of information that we traditionally hand signed. Um, and they were doing that with board votes. So that's why we don't have the unsigned, we have an unsigned version. I will reach out to the Department of Housing and I will request that we, where is our signed copy? Because we did not get back a signed copy. But the, the, through the budget process, when the, when the, the, the Board of Commissioners approved the, 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 um, uh, the budgets these previous years and even this year, and DHCD has approved it, all of the information about the, the management agreements are in that. So it, it, is, it is a binding agreement. It is, no, we I, I copy, to... excuse me, my copy very clearly says that this agreement is not effective until signed by the DHCD. And all I'm asking for today, Mr. Chairman, is permission to work with Pamela to get a hold of that. And if that doesn't work, for the board to vote to allow me to go to the uh, DHCD in Boston to get the copy. I don't need Pamela to go to DHCD or I'll do that myself if the board will approve it. So I, I will get a copy and Gary, I don't know if you can comment on that too about because again, just like the budget. I don't need, any, I don't need okay. any comments. I just need a copy of a signed management okay. agreement. So I will attempt to get a copy from the from the Department of Housing of the signed management agreement. I will Fine. get a copy of it. Can we, have, can we have a vote here to have me do it if it doesn't work? We don't need a vote, John. Pardon? We do said you don't need a vote. I don't need a vote. I can do it without a vote. Pamela will. Pamela, Pamela will get it. We'll get you a signed the management agreement. And and we'll give her two weeks. No, it, I'm sorry, sir. I can't make promises for when the Department of Housing will will get back to me. So for the amount of time that it took to, for them to get back to us about the, moving the, the fiscal year, again, the Department of Housing is dealing with 248 housing authorities. Okay, okay. This All right. Week. So you'll I get will, the I agreement. I will get it. As, absolutely. I will look to get that signed copy for you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. I have one question setting aside the signed copy. When did the board vote to extend the con the contract of the management agreement after the initial one year in 2019? It's I don't in recall that ever being done. It was prior to you coming. It was in 29, uh, 2020. It's on the agreement. Hold on. John, do you have the agreement with you? I, I do have one here somewhere. So in 2020, so there was a vote that's recorded in the minutes that there was an agreement to extend the contract. It absolutely management is. agreement. Absolutely. Absolutely. For how many and years? I, One year? No, for three years. And our three years is up in September of 2023. And there's Great. also okay. a clause for a 60 day out on either party. So if yep. you're not happy with the management agreement, you can put in a 60 day notice and we would be happy to help you and give you the public housing information about how to go about hiring an executive director. Uh, because I there only was asked a when it was, process. I only asked when it was voted. That's all I asked. No, I didn't say anything about no, anything but I'm else. Just, it's, I pointed it out to John yesterday, and I'm, I'm it, pointing it, that out to the full board. Okay. All right, where are we now? Um, okay. Virtual meetings. The virtual oh, meetings. Meeting. Virtual meetings. Yes. Yes. yes, I note that uh, every single, uh, or, or the, let me start it this way. The um, newsletter that's put out to our tenants and the tenants in Amherst and in Belchertown says that the meetings of the boards are uh, hybrid. And I just wanted to have a vote that, that we have our meetings hybrid going forward. So point of clarification, so the Amherst Housing Authority and each housing authority is autonomous and each board can choose to do what they want to do. Um, the Amherst Housing Authority has a virtual meeting only and has only has been virtual since March of 2020. The Amherst Housing Authority never went back to it. 
the Belchertown Housing Authority went to hybrid meetings in um, the spring of this past year. And then they will be resuming, presumably, um, virtual meetings, depending, they're, they're watching what's happening with COVID. So Hadley, in Hadley's, it should have been updated in the newsletter that it was virtual the last two months. Um, what was last month? October, it was not updated. It should have been updated in November. It was absolutely posted that it was a virtual only meeting. I didn't say posted. I said the newsletter says that they are hybrid. I understood, and I apologize if that was incorrect. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So in this, in the, and again, this is under the, the governor has allowed this to happen, and um, while there may be some people that think this is, I'm, I'm not sure why we're shaking our heads, sir. While some people may think that this is keeping tenants from participating, it actually increases the likelihood that a tenant can participate. All they need to do is call in on the phone or log in on a computer or a smartphone. I'm just asking for a vote, Mr. Chairman, of our commission as to whether we, we would like to have virtual or hybrid meetings going forward. It's as simple as that. You got to put on the agenda, wouldn't it? Need a vote? Yes. Yeah. Can we have further discussion, Mr. Chair? Yeah, go ahead, Reese. Virtual meetings are the safest thing coming into a very, what is projected to be a severe respiratory illness season. We've got a myriad of respiratory illnesses going about, not just COVID. And I really would prefer that our board meet exclusively virtually for as long as we can to protect our tenants and members of the public. I myself have COVID right now. That's why I couldn't be at the office. I'm not over it yet. I am susceptible to every respiratory bug going around. And I would prefer to protect our tenants. <laughs> can I and can I make one other comment too? So and then the, the other thing is that it is um so there is feedback from the, the the public. Okay. The other comment too is that under the governor's order, so if you remember back in 2020, March of 2020, when there was the, the shutdown. Um, and essential personnel had to go to work. Housing authority employees are considered essential personnel. So it is in our best interest for the housing authority uh, employees to stay healthy so that we can care for our residents. And we were very lucky in all three of our housing authorities that we did not have um, an outbreak like other housing authorities did throughout the Commonwealth. Mr. Chairman, please. John. The, 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 the value of hybrid is that every single person can make their own choice. If it's uh, Risa, for example, or one of our employees wants to participate virtually, they can do that. If it's hybrid, that I could uh, uh, attend in person. And um, that's the way every other uh, uh, committee in town uh, uh, works except for the Board of Health. It is what the chairman of the Board of Health of Hadley, who's, by the way, an MD, a doctor, uh, recommended that we do hybrid uh, because it meets everybody's needs. And uh, anyone who's concerned about the health issue can do it virtually. Um, and uh, that's why I would just like to call for a vote. Recent can vote no. I, I would vote yes, and we'll just see what, hap see what happens. So there's no harm in calling up for a vote. Sir, Pamela, do you have any comments? Yeah, just brief before you comment, um, Richard said that. So that's actually inaccurate. The planning board and the community preservation board meet 100% virtual in the town of Hadley. They are allowed to vote. And while I respect the doctor from the public health, one, her opinion was, was um, obtained in a manner that was against our guidelines or, or against the law. 
and her opinion on on the participation of tenants is beyond her scope as an md that's uh, the effectiveness of a meeting is is not up within the the, the scope of an md Sec lastly sir um it is would not be um it would not be voluntary by by the staff to join a hybrid meeting. The staff has to be here to set up and to make sure that everything everybody is set up set up. Absolutely. What what I would propose is the conversation that was had afterwards and the tenants requested is that the board approves um, some some IT expenses so that we set up IT in the community room for the tenants that wish to come and we could have the, the, the meeting on so that they could participate that way. And that we also further invest in computer equipment, which we have in our two other housing authorities for the commissioners that need laptops in order to participate with the meetings. And then that would satisfy all the options and would keep everyone safe. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Suggestion that yes, John. Mr. Chairman, yes, I move the question. And you would need a second to do that. All right, I need a second. Do a second. I'll second that for further discussion if you want it. Oh, I think Reese had something to say. Okay, Reese. Uh, no, I was just going to say what you already said. Community preservation meets exclusively virtually. In the place. We take a vote on that. Um, you would have to ask for a motion. But you uh, will have a vote on this. So I need a motion made. John, the mo I'll make the motion. Yes. To have a, a hybrid meeting. Yes, please. Is there a second? I seconded that. All in favor of hybrid? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye. 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 It doesn't carry. So can I, can, so while, because so, this so is may I ask one, may I ask a question, Pamela? I, I like your idea, I, I like your idea of the, uh, the IT being set up in the community room, because that's what I was looking for last Monday when I asked if that could be set up, because I would still sit with you and Rich or anybody else in the office and the tenants could have been in the community room virtually participating, but there's no computer, there's no Wi-Fi connection. So I'd like to uh, be on record that we would move toward that if we're going to do uh, where the motion didn't pass, we're still virtual, but I'd like the tenants to have access and not all of them can. So IT department, I'd like to see that happen. So can I suggest yeah, chairperson? That was yeah. discussed last time. Yeah, we, so we have been discussing that. So can we um, make a motion? to um so i guess like a little bit out of order i'm sorry is there any commissioner that would feels that they would like a laptop um that it would remain property of the housing authority of course but you would have the laptop throughout your years of service as a board of commissioners would it, does any commissioner feel they need um, a piece of equipment i i don't need a specific laptop other than wherever the meeting is I, I can go. I'm, I'm looking for the the accessibility from from the tenant standpoint because some of them can't get it in their own use. I don't I don't need a computer. I I have an Apple and I don't need a Microsoft or a Dell or an HP or anything like that. Not for me. Thank so you. so hearing that that it doesn't appear at this time, and I would say that 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 should be open at any time too. That but then could we have a motion to purchase IT equipment for the community room for the purposes of um of the of the tenants and the public attending uh the board of commissioner meetings i move I that we purchase oh, a me. piece of equipment for use by the tenants and public in the community room with wi-fi connectivity so that they can attend board of commissioner meetings i'll second that thank you risa second all all in favor aye aye all right passed John, did you did you vote? No, I'll, I'll abstain. Well, we used to have a computer and, and not Wi-Fi there. Okay, I got. It. So now we have um, some public. public comments. All right. Uh, now we have public comments. 
Okay, there is going to be a, a comment here. I'll move over if you want to come sit here. Chair? Yes, Grace. Is there a time restriction and the uh, person commenting needs to state their name and address? Exactly. I was just going to say that. I will state my name, Sue Oppenheimer. I'm not stating my address for, for security reasons. Sure. Okay. Anyway, I wrote two letters to the Hadley Housing Authority last month when we couldn't get on because there was no equipment for us and we were shut out of the meeting totally. And this month, to be put on the agenda, never responded to. So I wanted to let people know that there was no response. What I wanted to do is because we were shut out of last month's meeting, people that didn't have the proper equipment, um, we, you, you voted on a reasonable accommodation. One thing, if you're gonna be passing these policies, is people have to understand what the policy was like before we got taken over by Amherst. I just want a minute to say that when we had reasonable accommodations in the past before Amherst came in, we would go down to the office in Hadley, get a reasonable accommodation sheet, and then we would take it to our doctor and then they would send it back to us or we would pick it up at the doctors. Now what the procedure is, which is very hard since we're a disabled and elderly population, with people getting older and older, and you know we have a lot of people that are in their 80s, we have to contact Pam Creek who, at the Amherst Housing. She has to send us a reasonable accommodation. We have to sign it. It has to go back to her, and then she sends it to the doctor, who sends it back to her, and then, they, and then it goes to Pamela. Once the doctor sends it back to Pamela, it goes to um, our executive director, Pam, and it, it, we have no time frame. That, ex, that reasonable accommodation that she decides if it's going to accept, be accepted or not, she has made herself reasonable co accommodation coordinator, which I feel is conflict of interest. She's deciding on which, which reasonable accommodation in the end are going to be accepted or not. And there's no time frame. And I do understand that a lot of these reasonable accommodations sit for, de you know, for months on, on her desk and not being responded to. So I think we're making it much too complex. We have to look at this reasonable accommodation. We have to remember that we're senior and disabled housing. One more thing to say is when, when you when Reese uh, went to the uh, select board meeting in Richie's place, um, uh, the other board members weren't notified of it. And there is something called seniority, people who have been on the board longer than Reese, and they weren't notified of it. So when you talk about, you know, also the fact that you spend a lot of time in the office in the office and none of the rest of the tenants are allowed in the office the door is locked we're only allowed to hand things through a glass window you yourself meet with the, with the people in the office all the time with the management without other board members being there so don't talk about people who are coming and talking you know and communicating board members that are communicating you know if we happen to run into them or want to talk to them after a meeting you of all people should not be the one and stop with the time because you took a lot of time yourself and nobody was timing time. you. All right. Who said you, you took a lot of 35 minutes with your presentation. So why do we have a time limit? Are you the only one that doesn't have one Reese? No, I'm not. Two sets of rules. Thank you. I'm having Pamela give you a they are, because this because the policy was on the agenda at the last time and despite the help of the assistance of, of me attempting to help the attendants that were in she walked away she did she's behind um the tenants that were in the meeting from signing on um they were unable to sign on um the with board approval reese um and mary billion met with the tenants on in october and Sue Oppenheimer, who is here, uh, was in, in that meeting about the reasonable accommodation. So the tenants had the ability to talk about the reasonable accommodation. And again, the reasonable accommodation policy is a boilerplate policy from the Department of Housing. And the Hadley Housing Authority is following that policy from the Department of Housing. And the board approved it to the letter of the law. 
I was not at that meeting where you talked about reasonable accommodation. We were shut out of that meeting because of the fact you decided after meeting in person for so long, all of a sudden you decided to go virtual. That's Reese. That was your decision. You were, tenant, you were at the tenant meeting that talked about it. Reese, do you have a comment? No, we weren't. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Sue, you were present at the meeting I held with tenants with board approval about reasonable accommodation and that we were going to be uh, discussing further policies and procedures that are more directly impact tenants here only at Hadley. You were there for the entire meeting. You never finished the reasonable accommodation and you we, and it was voted on by the board. Right. So that no it was a no vote. So you can't say that it was done. It was voted on since then. The, and the why tenants, are, so the tenants did not have a choice about voting or not. The tenants were simply informed about the reasonable accommodation policy from DHCD. And I, I personally want to thank you for your comment. Well, I feel that that you didn't that we didn't finish anywhere near talking about reasonable accommodation. So as far as I've talked to the people that have attended that meeting with you, we only touched the surface. I'm talking about a voted reasonable accommodation. I think we need to bring it out again and discuss it. It is a boilerplate Department of Housing uh, template for the for the reasonable accommodation. The only thing changed on the reasonable accommodation is the Hadley Housing Authority's information as far as the name of the housing authority, the procedure, the process, the forms used for reasonable accommodations all come from the Department of Housing. And I'd like to ask Richie, the chairman, I would like to ask him why when I put in twice to be put on the agenda, I was not put on the agenda. I had it time stamped and dated. It went to the management. Were, did they even tell you that I requested to be on the agenda? If I can did management that, even tell you, earlier, Richie? So earlier you had advised that the housing authority did not act on your request. And Pam Creek had reached out to you on numerous occasions, and I had telephoned you too to get the specifics of the, what you wanted to be on the agenda. And I gave her the specifics, but then didn't you go did, any which was than that. one, which is, was was a grievance, which this you cannot bring a grievance at this point to the housing authority. And two, it was about this reasonable accommodation policy, which you can address at the public comment point. And you, you did not. It Somebody does, it should, does, should have gotten back to me as far as why I was not did. put on the agenda. We actually and did. you should have been aware of that I asked to be put on the agenda. Yeah, it, it, so it was all and handled correctly. And I'll, and I'll, even though I'm over my time, according to Reese, because we have a time frame and she doesn't. Yeah. And uh, I, one she thing else is... It's a board of commissioners meeting. It's the, it's the meeting me? for the... It's a board of commissioners meeting. That's why she doesn't have a time limit or any other commissioner. Yes, Reese. Uh, yes, I would uh, move that we enact what the attorney said, the proper way to handle public comment sections is uh, people commenting is to say, thank you for the comment and move to the next person. All right, thank you. Any, any other public comments? Do you want to? Nope. I think somebody might be coming up. Sure. She's... Yeah. Hi, can you guys hear me? Yes. Oh, can you hear me? What, your name, please. Uh, Helene Rosenthal, I'm an advocate for Sue Oppenheimer. Okay. Um, it concerns me that uh, Belchertown meets in person and virtually, Amherst meets virtually only, Hadley meets virtually, did meet virtually during COVID, then in person, now we're back to virtuals. The Hadley Board of Health said there is no need to meet virtually unless a person is ill or has a compromised immune system. I would like to know why all of these three areas are not on the same page. What concerns me the most is that the population of Golden Court, and I know a lot of people there, um, I visited, I'm a, uh, a person who knows Golden Court, 
What upsets and concerns me is that several people, myself included, where I live, we have meetings in person because of the fact that there are so many people that cannot handle the uh, the uh, sophistication, the equipment. Some people have smartphones. They just can't do it. And if you had an in-person meeting and virtual, then it would give the opportunity to people that would like to come to the meeting and uh, the other ones could go virtual. So that's my concern. Is there anything you have that you'd like to say to me? Thank you for your Nothing. comment. Thank you. Thank you. Judy Roncalli. I have a suggestion. Um, the policy that was just passed without tenants knowing about it um, or anything similar to policies, I suggest that it would be put in the newsletter so tenants can know what's going on. There's only four or five tenants that ever attend these meetings doesn't mean that the other tenants are not interested. So you send out a newsletter and if you could, like the, um, the reasonable accommodation one, tenants, I believe tenants would like to know that that's the way to, that's the way to do a reasonable accommodation. They don't know. We don't have a tenants association to educate the tenants. The newsletter could definitely put that in there and edu help to educate the tenants. All right. Thank you. Okay, Pamela, maybe you could answer that or so, yeah. Thank you for your comment. And it's act that's actually a very good suggestion. And we we will uh, look to do that with the last the last three ones we just did. Thank you. As well as posting in the community room. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. And then we just need the we need to do the next meeting. All right. Uh, uh, adjourn. No, nope, we need uh, uh, next meeting. Motion made to adjourn. No, nope, no, nope, my next yeah. meeting. Carry. We need to um, do the next meeting. A date for the oh, next, next meeting. Next meeting. Um, is Mr. Allen still here? He had to leave. Do you know what to time get he back left? to his get back to his wife two o'clock. Ten minutes ago. Okay, Pam, can you move that in the minutes, please? Okay. And then, so we just need a, um, a date for the next meeting. Okay, uh, December 22, probably, something like that. Um, we do what, Thursdays? Yeah, it would be the 22nd. The 22nd, Pam? What's the it's oh, it's Tuesdays. <laughs> um, if it's a Tuesday, you'd be looking at the 20th. It would be the third Tuesday. And the 27th is the fourth. Okay, so the, the third Tuesday is what we've been doing. Yeah. Um, when you want to leave sufficient time for Gary to pace to do his accounting, so is the is the 20th too soon. Today is the 22nd. We were able to get it. I just want to be sure we have the financial numbers. Yes, it should we be. Generally wait should... the, third, the third or the fourth Tuesday, don't we? Yeah, so that would be the third. And I, I do believe that Gary would be fine um, that we or that we would have the financials in time to distribute it. We'll probably, we should have them by December 16th. So we can distribute the packet at that date. Then I'm fine with either date. And noon? Yes, please. On It's Tuesday, correct? That's correct. Yes, noon would be preferable. Thank you. Uh, new, uh, Tuesday the 20th at noon. All right. Motion made to adjourn. I'll make I that second. motion. Second. I second. All in favor. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Yeah.